Hello, it's Brickzar, and we're going to look at a vintage Lego train set. This is one that I just purchased. It's the first time I've ever, ever owned this set. I've been wanting it uh, for many years. This originally came out in 1980. It's set number 7730. And uh, 1980 was a great time. That's when we began the 12 volt train line. Uh, that was available in Europe and they made a lot of really cool trains beginning there. So we're going to show you this one and show you it running and show you the different cars and what you get with this set. Alright, here's an overview of the uh, complete set. I do not have the box, I do have the instructions, but you get the engine and three cars, two minifigures, forklift and some cargo. Set had about 512 or so pieces, I'm not sure of the exact count, and these two minifigures. So let's take a closer look at, at some of the accessories you get. Now, it is from the 12 volt era, so it's got the gray rails with the center power rails that you put on there. And we'll look at the instructions real quick. It gives you a picture that's similar to what's on the box. I think that is what would be on the box there. And then on the back it shows you some of the other trains from that time period. Uh, I like to refer to it as a golden age, but I guess technically the blue train would be the golden age and this would be the silver age, but to me the 1980s trains, they, they were awesome. And you see a bunch of them, different, different ones they had on here. And that's one I really would like to get. It's very expensive, that locomotive. It has the big wheels, set 7750. That's one I'm going to work on getting. Uh, but they're always they're so expensive. I see one on eBay for about $400 now. Just, it's actually a decent price for that set, but I don't want to pay it. But anyway, getting off of this set, we need to focus on 7730. This is electric goods train, is what they call it. And so it's a freight train. And here's a close-up of the locomotive. And as with the case of these trains, they always, or usually always have the train number is the set number. And so we got this locomotive, and I really need to take the cover off of this. I'm just take it apart because it's got a sticker in there of the controls. And I thought that was really neat. Uh, some of the other trains I had didn't have that. But it's got like the different gauges and things for this uh, goods train. I thought that was really neat. Let me put this back together. All right, before I put the roof back on, I'll show you these windows, the black windows, and you got the two by two and the one by two windows there. Those are very rare. They only occurred in train sets, uh, I think just a couple of them. And so those are very hard to come by. And they're very expensive parts. And yeah, although it looks like it might be just a common window, it's, it's rare. And I hope LEGO never reproduces them in a new set because <laughs> then these won't be as rare anymore. Uh, uh, but there will probably be differences. Even if they reproduce it, it probably looks slightly different than these. But uh, that's an expensive piece to buy, the, the black windows. I right, got it back together. And it uses the black minifigure heads with no f facial features for these different exhausts. It's got a smokestack. Interesting piece. It's got a steering wheel on the front of it uh, for some kind of feature for the front of the train. And it has, again, the train number on that side. And the other side looks the same as this. Now, this locomotive has a 12-volt train motor, and it's the red one. You can see this one's been heavily used. The contacts are worn. And I believe they had an accessory pack you could buy to replace these contacts as they wore, wore out. You can take the motor apart and put some new contacts on, but they still work. And it also has the rubber wheels and these, these would wear out too. Uh, one of my reviews of a set I did recently, the wheels were coming off, they were still worn out. Uh, a lot of times they'll dry right. And some people make aftermarket ones that are just about the same as these. And this wheel here really serves no feature. It's just there for looks. The other wheels are the powered wheels. So that's the locomotive. And another thing on the locomotive, forgot to mention, these large pieces here, there's one on either side, they're weights. And I think that was a problem with some of the um, sets from the blue track era. They, you'd have a lot of slippage. 
you know, real train, uh, you got metal on metal on the wheels and the rails, and they, you know, when the train's starting, it's going to slip and they'll dump sand out to make the train go, but we're not going to be dumping sand on our Lego. <laughs> so they put the weights and the rubber tires, and that gives you the traction, you know. Um, so if you didn't have the rubber on the tires, they'd probably just spin, and they also put grooves on the track. So that's things you have to do in the toy world to kind of compensate for things but it's interesting that in the real world they have to do things to compensate for slippage as well now I'm not familiar with a, a lot of the different styles of cars in Europe I'm more familiar with American style and so I, I may not know the technical name for some of these this is an interesting uh, vehicle it's got a open top like it'd be a gondola gondola or whatever how you want to pronounce it but uh, it's got doors on the side so it's either a flat car <laughs> or a grain car I don't know what it is uh, but it's got these doors on it and it's just open on the top like that it's got the DB on the sides and then the next one is some kind of tank car it has these use these little technique pieces to be kind of like little pipes coming out of the side they're on both sides of it. It's a real simple car to build, but it's got a lot of macaroni on it. <laughs> These pieces here, all macaroni. That's what we call. I call them. It's not the technical name, I'm sure. And then the last car, it kind of looks to me like a refrigerator car um, because it's got this little unit on the back of it. I'm not sure if that's what that is. Like the um, if that's the generator. For the refrigeration, or if, it, if that's some other kind of thing, but it's uh, it's a goods car, and this is where the forklift guy is supposed to lift up the parts for the the cargo and put in there. I need to wash this one, but that's the goods car. All right, and you also get the the goods. These go in that box car or refrigerator car, and we got the forklift to load them up. And they designed the little pieces where you can use the forklift to pick it up. Like that you can lift it up and these forklifts have a spring in them a lot of times the spring comes out and actually the one that I bought it had no spring the spring was missing which is very common the springs break they get worn out so I got one out of my collection this is this this one's actually one from my childhood I still have it um, I don't have the other pieces to the set but let's see how good it is Still good. This is how I used to do when I rode a forklift at work. Boop. Boop. So that's the uh, forklift and the cargo. Now everybody's um, apple juice is broken. <laughs> it was what was in the, the red crates is the apple juice, and it splattered all over the ground here. And then you got two train workers, an uh, engineer and a conductor. And these are pretty standard uniforms that you saw in a lot of the worker sets, whether it be train or other things. But uh, my engineer, he's been working hard and he's all worn out <laughs> his torso. I, I got some of those in my collection I could replace them with. That, they, they got the same shirt, but his is, is all worn out. But that's okay. And he has the construction hat and he has the regular cap. Now here are some of the cross ties, and these cross ties have these little clips on them that you attach the track to. They're a lot more sturdier than the um, the old blue track was, just on regular plates, and they lock in. The problem is, is that with age, the clips break when you try to take them apart. So I broke, actually broke, some of these were broken when I got them, and some of them I broke, but they'll still connect uh, even when they're broken. So it's not that big an issue, but um, it's very common. Like I just, I, think I just almost broke that one. <laughs> but um, they'll still connect even with it with it being broken, just not as securely. So not a big issue. And then the, the these are the power rails, and they interlock and they connect to the middle of the uh, cross tie. And so you have one section of track right here. It is the one that has the wire connected to it. And I have this wire run over here that goes, this would go in the transformer, 
which is generally, it was sold separately. I don't think any of the 12 volt sets actually came with the transformer. I think you had to buy it separately. I may be wrong on that, but I don't recall any of them even being big enough to have the transformer because the transformer is real tall. But um, this this connector is Euro, the European style. It would plug into that transformer. But what I've done is I've modified this. I take this this connector here and I put it in there, and I got a power supply. It's multi-purpose power supply, five volt, twelve volt, and I hook it up to the 12 volt where I can power it and so that's what we're going to do now see if I can make this work get my wire oops get my wire I just have to do this I need to build me something where I can actually control the speed now I didn't clean the rails so it's going to have some places where it doesn't flow as good doing actually pretty good Not bad for a 33-year-old train. I think those contacts are probably original. I don't know about the rubber wheels. All right, let's get a closer look at it coming. So there you have it, set 7730, the electric goods train, 12 volt train from 1980. Um, overall, I really love this set. It's hard to come by because of the black windows and the red train motor. So you're usually not going to find it for less than $200 in used condition without the box. Or with the box, I mean, you're easily three, three to $400. Um, but I was really happy to get this one and get it, which I think is complete. Had all the pieces per the instructions. So, really happy with it. Only had to replace one broken part. Not sure about all the stickers. Looks like it's got all the stickers. Uh, I really like the sticker that's on the inside of the cab with the controls. Like the 12 volt track. And eventually, I'd like to get a, just do a, a setup. Probably have to do it on the floor. Uh, running the, the 12 volt trains and I'll be doing reviews of some other from the 12 volt era there's still a few that I don't have uh, you, I think it's the locomotives some of the, the locomotives I don't have but we will be doing more 12 volt train reviews which is hard to do here in the United States since they never sold these here uh, we really missed out and as a kid that um, from the 70s when they first uh, had the Lego brand outside of Samsonite I've been seeing them at, you know, Lego sets in the stores. We always were going to the stores, Vinyl Play World, looking at the Lego, and I never remember seeing any of these because they never sold them here. So I missed out on this. I didn't even know about these trains until, um, really, until the, um, the 90s. So these have been around a while before I even knew about them. But anyway, love the 12-volt trains. Anyway, thanks for watching this review of set 7730.